Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with Tom Wetzel from Thames and Cosmos looking at the liberation of Reedburg, uh, which has been out in German, now coming out in English. Correct. When it, will it be released? So this is a production copy, which mm -hmm. means that the distribution should be maybe a month away, maybe uh -huh. even less, if well, it depends on the boats. That's right. It's all a question of the boats <laughs> all the time. So you're always at the mercy of them. Um, so what are we trying to do? This is a cooperative game. Yes. yes in which we are trying to liberate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're familiar with Andor, which I am, it's one of my favorite co-op games. Uh, in fact, when I started working for the company, it was one of the games I was very excited about. So I was a little worried when I first heard about this, because this is um, a game in the Andor world, but they've cut the time down from right. about two hours to 35, 45 minutes. It's like, okay. it's not going to work, right? Well, but it's a very different look. Like, it, it doesn't look at all like Andor. Yeah. So you're sort of zooming in on one area of Andor and having mm -hmm. an experience there. Yeah, so this kind of takes place right between uh, Legends 4 and 5 in the, in the Andor world, uh, where you're preparing the castle for the dragon that's coming to attack. Okay. Which is kind of cool. And like the regular Andor game, it's totally cooperative. Uh, this plays two to four. Um, you could play one, but you'd have to play multiple characters. Right. Um, like I said, so you're preparing the castle for the, the dragon that's coming to attack. And if you've played the game, you know you need to clear the castle of all the creatures. So again, this kind of zooms in on that process. Okay. So we have a castle board here, a representation of this landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are these different elements? Uh -huh. So uh, the way that they've kind of focused in on this is, you'll see here, this is a creature. And as the game is set up, these are, there are actually going to be more of these out there. And okay. you need to clear the castle of all of these cards. And you'll see here they've got like uh, kind of like hit points or uh, health points. You need to, as a character, visit that location and defeat the creature. Which is actually pretty simple because he's got really low health. Okay. Uh, some creatures are going to be harder, in which case working together is going to be the key. Okay. Just like the regular game. But initially we have a lot of stacks around here where we don't know what's coming, or there's going to be multiple cards in a stack and you can adjust the difficulty. Yeah, so this has um, one of the coolest things I like in, in board games, which is, uh, so let's say you're playing with this, uh, the, uh, the wizard, um, or sorcerer for instance, like you have all of these cards at your disposal and you can play one on your turn, but to get them back in your hand is going to cost you a turn, which will add more creatures to the deck. So it's a constant balance of trying to get rid of the creatures by using your card, but then having more creatures come into play as you progress through the game. Okay. So these uh, decks represent the different characters, and each character is going to have different combinations of mm -hmm. things that they can do with options for how they're going to use each of these cards. Yeah, and that's one okay. of the ways that I think it works so well as a co-op is because each player has a unique ability. And so as you're traveling around, you know what you can do, and you can be like, all right, I see like you're already there. If I come join you, I can actually add some hit points to your total. Yeah, anyway, so it's very puzzly. It's a Euro game, mm -hmm. puzzle co-op, but it plays in, like I said, 35, 45 minutes, and the setup is super simple as well, because as you can see, it's mostly cards instead of um, the standees and, and a bunch right. of different huge board, which I personally love, but this I see is very accessible. Okay. What's the nature of a turn? Am I sure. choosing a card, playing it, and that's that's it? Yeah, so uh, the end goal is to, like I said, uh, clear the castle of all the creatures, but also these doors with a question mark, there's six of them, and you need to complete four of them. Now, you have to clear, let's say, uh, let's say you've defeated this creature, which okay. was a tough one. He goes in, like, your trophy, trophy case. Okay. Um, and then this card gets revealed. You now know... If you want to complete this task, you have uh, Oral the Bard, and you must pay for each uncompleted task card. So you get okay. money in the game by defeating creatures. You get enough money, you can complete this task, and that's one of the four that you need to do. Or if you're not even close to it, you just go do other things. Exactly. And that's hanging out there waiting. Maybe mm -hmm. you can make it happen. Yeah, so your character is actually, let's see, on this board. And if I play, say I play this card. Okay. Up here. Yep. Uh, I can do one of three options. I can use one of my wizard books, or I can flip two cards that okay. I'm not even at the location. So that's great because that's information. Or the boot means I can travel. 
And you'll see there's no ore between that, so I also get a willpower point, which okay. will help me in battles later on in the game. Okay. Um, and each character, like I said, is totally unique. Like the archer has all of these, um, uh, what are they called again? The quills. Quills, yeah. And uh, you use those in battle instead of your regular battle points, which like the, the warriors obviously can have pretty good okay. statistics on. Okay. So very much coordinating with other people, trying to figure out where things go, and it's, again, two to four players. Mm -hmm. uh, does it change any with player count? Or how do you change it? You just adjust the difficulty of the task you must complete? Yeah, so the player count does affect the game a little bit, but it's all in the initial setup. Okay. So when you set up with like a six-player game, you're going to put more of these creatures out on the board initially. Okay. But once the game gets going, it's pretty much the same. Okay. Yeah. All right. There we go. A uh, review of the liberation of Reitberg coming from Thames and Cosmos, mm -hmm. uh, middle of 2020, or no? Uh, you said no, yeah, like uh, probably within the month. A month or so. Yeah. April, May, 2020. Yeah. We have some some space for transportation issues. Very very accessible <laughs> game. I'm really excited about it. All right. Thank you very much, Tom, for the overview. Thank you.